Hey everybody, Rich here, with a brand new browser from Microsoft. Internet Explorer 9. And if you're saying, but Rich, that's not new. Actually, yeah, it is. Because this is the RTM. This is the official release. This is not the beta. This is not the RC. This is the official Windows Internet Explorer 9. Version 9.0.8112.16421, 64-bit edition. To answer a question up front, no, this will not work in XP. You will need, as a Windows system requirement, either Vista Service Pack 2, 32 or 64-bit edition, Windows 7, 32 or 64-bit edition, Windows Server 2008, 32 or 64-bit edition, or Windows Server 2008 R2, 64-bit edition. So out of the way up front, no, this will not work in XP. That's basically the question right there. Now, a lot of you out there do not run beta or RC browsers and only prefer to run official releases. So, this will probably be, for many of you, your first experience with this browser. So I'm going to cover a few things, show you how to do them, and so on. Cover some new features, cover the stuff I like, cover the stuff I don't like, and so on. Uh, the first thing is that I like the fact that I can search from within the address bar, just like Chrome. Firefox does do this, by the way, with a uh, an about config with what is that called? Keyword URL. If you go into about config and search for a keyword, you can see where to set that there. But anyway, so if I search for Windows Internet Explorer system require yeah, type it right requirements. Now the default engine is Bing, so if I search, it goes like that. If I were to add another thing here, you can, uh, while typing, it drops it down, and or you can just actually, if you don't feel like typing something, you can just drop this down here. It goes to what you've been to recently. I like the fact that you can X these out right from here. That's actually pretty darn cool. So anyway, I can go to add and it goes into the add-ons gallery and from here you can add in other searches if you wish such as Google or Yahoo or eBay or New York Times or whatever it's all from here so it's convenient but the coolest part uh, definitely is the uh, availability to X these out which is cool so if I want to uh, get rid of something from history or from favorites or whatever like if I wanted to get rid of uh, this one for example click gone and it brings up, um, you see, if you just said to yourself, well, it didn't delete anything. Yes, it did, because it brought up the next part of your little viewing history there. That's just neat. That's good. I like that. Very, very convenient. Uh, <clears throat> now, the next thing is that a lot of you are going to say, I do not like having the tabs to the right of the address bar. That sucks. That's okay. You can change that. Just go into an empty space here, right-click, left-click, show tabs on a separate row and now they're down here and you can add tabs to your content and you have all this horizontal space available which is good if you want it back the way it was right click do uncheck this where it says show tabs in separate row and it puts it back to the way it was which is neato mosquito oh yeah you can't put tabs on top or at least not to my knowledge I when I unlocked the toolbars here I didn't really see anywhere I mean, I can resize this, which is good. I can resize the address bar easily, but as far as, like, can I move it above the address bar, top of the browser, I did not see a way to do that. So I was like, well, can't do that, but beggars can't be choosers there. So let me go lock those tabs again and close this. Um, you can t actually let me open up another tab you can take tabs in and out of the browser very easily before I show that actually you can now move tabs back and forth uh, you could do this before in the RC and betas but this is now very smooth very easy to work with I like it a lot um, it's nothing new but the fact that it's very smooth is what counts it may show as a little choppy in this screencast but believe me it's smooth it's good moving tabs outside of the browser is now really easy so if I go outside it makes it as a separate window and here's the old browser right here if I want to reattach it go right back again this is something that Chrome does already but now it works 100 percent in IE9 whereas in the RC and earlier editions it was mm, a little wonky a little bit but now not at all which is good 
Um, you can do creating new tabs with Control T or by hitting this right here. Uh, I don't like the fact that, see, if I didn't show this to you, you probably would not have seen it. So if you'll notice that when I hover over it, then it's here. I always do tabs with Control T, but some of you are really mouse centric. So you have to know that they really should have kept this on all the time so that, or a different color or something, so you know you hit that or put a little plus sign in there maybe to know that you can create a new tab from there. So, But that is how you do tabs and whatever. Um, doing uh, private browsing. Now, you'll know you're in private browsing or not. It'll say in private over in the address bar here, which I'll, you'll see in a second. Getting to a private browsing tab or a, brow a private browsing session, I find that a little inconvenient. If you launch a new tab, you'll notice at the bottom there's in private browsing. You can hit that link right there, or you can go to... Um, the, uh, the cog, I guess you can call it, which is the tools menu, and I can go, see I don't even remember, yeah okay it's under safety, and so it's tools, safety, in private browsing. That's way too many steps to take just to launch a private browsing session, and w when you do you get your private browsing window. It also annoys me that I cannot have private sessions and non-private tabs side by side. If I tried to do it to attach it, it won't do it. Now, Chrome does not do this either. Neither does Firefox. As a matter of fact, the only browser that does do it is Opera. So if you want to have private and non-private tabs side by side, Opera is the only one that does it. I really thought Chrome would have done it by now, but it doesn't. So You can do incognito windows, which is what they call them in Chrome, but they're separate windows, of course. But I want to have them side by side because I just think that's convenient and you can't do it. Now another way to do uh, the private browsing is just control shift P like that and it opens a private session. Now as far as the internet, ex uh, internet options go, the only one you're probably going to be interested in that is a new feature from 8 is the accelerated graphics area under the advanced tab. By default, this is unchecked, and yes, you want it unchecked because it, on web pages where uh, it has very uh, rich content, it will use your graphics card to help render the page, which is good. If you don't want that for whatever reason, you can check this box and then restart the browser, and then you'll be using software rendering instead of GPU hardware rendering. <clears throat> That's the only thing really different, at least in the Internet Options section I've seen from 8 to 9. Now there is um, in the, in the manage add-on section, okay this I don't like. I've never liked this about IE uh, and this can be said for any version of IE that has add-ons I've ever used. The king of add-ons is Firefox. They are king of the hill and no one has dethroned them yet because Firefox has the largest directory meaning you have the most choice with the most uh, useful add-ons you can have. Chrome has extensions and it has a lot of them. They're still not as good as Firefox. A lot of choice, but Firefox is king of the hill. Now when it comes to IE, the only thing you're really going to care about here is toolbars and I mean yeah there is tracking protection which I'll get to in a second, um, but that's a new feature of this uh, browser over 8. I can't really s think of any useful add-ons for this browser other than maybe say um, oh what's that uh, Xmarks, sorry I couldn't remember it Xmarks is good for IE but that's a separate executable so but as far as this well yeah there's really nothing here and there's nothing I could download which would make this browser any better other than X, Xmarks is the only one I can really think of so, so eh, whatever now there is um, the tracking protection. Now you could get a tracking protection list online. If you click this, what happens is it brings up a list of providers. I consider this way too much of a pain in the neck to deal with because you'll see uh, reputable companies like Trust E and things like that where you can enable enhanced tracking protection. Decent, yeah, but complicated. And you can go to the tracking protection and check it for yourself. I found that to be way too complicated for this browser. This should be it should be simple to do tracking protection lists. It's not in this browser. And to be honest, it's not simple in any other browser that's doing tracking protection either. 
So that's still kind of a new ground, I guess you could say. Now, as far as the favorites are concerned, uh, I haven't really seen any major difference other than the fact it's on the right. I can still pin it to the left, which is good. Firefox can also pin bookmarks. I don't know if Chrome can do I don't have the Chrome browser installed currently, so I don't know if you can actually attach um, in a window that does not move. Like when I say does not move, that means I can do this, but this doesn't move. Um, I know Firefox can do it, but I don't, like I said, I don't know if Chrome does this without an extension. I don't know if it's a native part of the browser. There are some people that use this, and they actually really like it. Don't know if it's in Chrome though, but it's an it's a nice feature. It's an old feature. It's not new. It's old, but it's still useful. Um, if anyone wants to post a comment on whether you can can actually do this in Chrome without an extension, please feel free to tell me and everybody else whether that's possible or not. Um, what else? Oh yeah, um, this is something I cannot show in the video, but it's a good feature nonetheless. Uh, if you have a, a tab open like this, you can actually, I can't show this here, but you can take this tab and drag it down, click and drag to the taskbar and pin it, just as if you would pinning a program. And that is convenient. This is not the same as Chrome's way of pinning, which does it inside the browser. This is outside the browser. Um, and it, integrates into the Windows environment, so it is different. Maybe the same name, pinning, but uh, the way it's done is different. Some of you may like that, some of you may find it altogether worthless, because um, you know you could just use favorites, whatever. Now, to uh, a couple other things, just in general operation here, um, if you want this menu here, I'll bring that out and bring it in again just to show you. Okay, so if you want this menu here, tap your Alt key. If you want it there permanently, view toolbars menu bar, and it stays there. If you want your favorites bar, view tool view toolbars favorites bar. If you want the status bar back, view toolbars status bar. So then you can see, uh, you know, right in this area down here. Some people really like having the status bar. I actually do. So I will most likely, <coughs> excuse me, keep this on when using the browser. But as far as this stuff up is up here. Nah, I don't need that. You might, and that's okay, but I will keep the status bar active. And when you turn on the status bar, this also brings back your uh, zoom settings. There are some people that a lot of people like to use this. Now, you can get the zoom from the cog and do zoom right here. It p pushes it to the right side. <coughs> Excuse me. But some people just prefer having it down here because they're just used to it. I don't know if it's more or less convenient to have it at the bottom right of the browser, but I do appreciate the fact that I can get to it in just one click instead of two. Because if you do it the, the uh, tools menu way, you have to click click to do it like this, but here it's just one. And it's right down here. Again, you get that back by going to View Toolbars Status Bar. And the status bar is there. Then you get your stuff and you can size them up, make things disgustingly huge, disgustingly small however you want to go about it. And let's see, was there anything else I wanted to mention about this? I don't really think so. I think that's more or less it. Um, in closing, I'll just say this. This is faster than the RC. It is more stable than the RC. This will probably be the first Internet Explorer user, if you're an IE hater, that is, the first IE you've used in a long time that you actually won't hate you'll say to yourself, wow, this actually, it's fast, it's good, and it is good. It's a good browser. I'm not saying it's bad. I, My complaints are minimal at best about this. This is not the same crap that we had to deal with with 6, 7, and 8. IE has finally come in, into its own here. If you're a Chrome user, you probably won't switch over to IE. If you're a diehard Firefox user, you probably won't switch over to IE either, but in the instances where you do have to use this browser because there are certain websites today that still require this browser in order to view correctly uh, to be blunt honest this browse this IE will not piss you off <laughs> I know it sounds funny but it's true this is literally the first IE in years and I mean years that does not tick me off and it won't anger you either you'll you'll actually have a good browsing experience with this like I said not it's not gonna switch you off of Chrome or Firefox if you happen to use those now but as far as is this a good IE yes 
I give it my thumbs up. And by the way, if you want to see a showcase website of what the browser can do, you can go to beautyoftheweb.com. This is a Microsoft website, so if you want to see all the happy good stuff of all the crazy cool things this browser can do, Beauty of the Web. You can go there and uh, check it out once you download the browser. The easiest way to get the browser, by the way, is microsoft.com slash IE which I think I showed earlier in this video. If I did, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but it is microsoft.com slash IE and go ahead and get IE 9 if for any reason it's better than 8. 